It's in the storms where you learn to rely on me. I questioned, why do my efforts always seem to fail and my spirit constantly tested? He assured, your strength isn't in never falling, but in every rise after a fall, every time you choose to trust and not be beaten. I then asked God, why the loneliness? Why does it stretch through my days? He comforted, in solitude, you find my voice, in loneliness my presence stays. It's there you find the depth of my companionship that truly pays. Continuing, I asked, Why the sorrow that floods like torrential rain? He replied, Through tears, your heart is cleansed, and from sorrow, wisdom you gain. I am your closest confidant in every loss and every pain. Lastly, I sought to understand, why is the path often veiled in mist, my vision unclear? He enlightened, in uncertainty, you seek my guidance, in obscurity I draw near. The mist is there to remind you, it's on faith, not sight, you steer. Greetings, shims and gents, and welcome back to another video with Glamorous Gems. My name is Ebony. If you're new here, welcome. If you're a returning gem or gent, welcome back. As seen by the title, we're going to get into the video. This is why I've been absent and this is my official life update. I want to first and foremost let y'all know this is not a bashing video. I am simply updating you on my life, what's been going on, where I am current day, and also the future of the channel and all of that. I want to first and foremost thank God for his grace, his mercy, just being there in my life through this hard, very hard transition that I'm going through. I also want to thank the brands that I work with that sponsor me um, and collaborate with me for your kindness, your patience, just understanding that my life has been, you know, in a very difficult space at this time. And also, I want to thank my best friend for being in my corner, being my listening ear, and also just letting me emotional dump on her, which that's not healthy to do in any friendship, but with the current circumstance, she has been there for me. Um, and I also want to thank my in-laws, especially my mother-in-law for just being a mother to me in this situation being a support to me and my children, her beautiful grandbabies, and really coming through for me as they have always done during this really hard time. And of course, an honorable mention to my beautiful mother, Mama Jim, for just being my support, um, being my listening ear, financially supporting me, pampering me, spoiling me, just to let me know that, you know, things will be okay and she's got my back but um yeah we're gonna go ahead and get into the video many of you started following me due to my plus size fashion videos um, but initially i started this channel because i was pregnant with my daughter and i just really wanted to share that type of content but the truth is I've been wanting to do YouTube since 2010 when my best friend let me know like you don't have to just watch YouTube for comedy like they have hair videos and different things like that so you know finally years later after procrastinating and pushing it off I finally decided to start my channel and I didn't really know the direction in which it was going to go but I figured out fashion was definitely the way to go. Um, so this is very different from any type of video that I've ever put on the channel. So the first thing that I want to mention is that you have to have a relationship with God. God is going to sustain you through all trials and seasons of your life. And if it wasn't for the relationship that I had with God, I don't know if I will be here right now making this video. Like I've literally felt like 
this is gonna take me out because it's been a lot y'all it has been a lot um i've been married well i'm 34 i have been married for 15 years i'm the mother of a 15 year old son and a five-year-old daughter and my family means the world to me my family is what grounds me it's what keeps me going you know but um my family life right now is changing and um I want to get into it, but I have to be respectful because I have family that watch my videos, my children, they watch my videos, and I'm never going to dishonor my husband to anyone for any views, likes, or anything. Um, I'm just simply I'm just simply sharing what I have experienced. Um, so yeah, when I was 18, I met my husband. We had a lot of signs that we were soulmates and that he was the man that God sent to me. I'll share a few. Um, I've been back and forth from Bermuda to America since I was five years old. But when I was 17 years old, I decided to permanently move out here to finish school. And I was in a relationship with my high school sweetheart on and off for four years because I did some high schooling um, out here and then I did some back home. And um, he tragically passed away in a bike accident. And when that happened, I knew that I would never probably want to move back to Bermuda at all. And when I met my husband um, and we started dating, um, I just felt like, you know, maybe he sent him to me or God had aligned this. So I want to give y'all just an introduction to how we met, um, just so you can understand like, you know, that part of it. And then I'm going to get more into it. So we met at the mall. Um, I was dating this guy at the time, but I was about to cut him loose because it was just not giving. So I went to the mall and I had to go to T-Mobile. He was at T-Mobile and he talked to me and um, I rejected him. I was like, I have a boyfriend. I'm not interested. But somehow I ended up giving him my number. I did not remember his name and I did not save his number in my phone. And I remember telling my friend like a few months later, I was like, we're getting out of high school this summer you know we're gonna be single because she was getting rid of her boo too and we don't have a we're gonna have a great summer but i was like i wish i remember the guy i met at the mall because he was so cute or well i said he was so fine and i was like but i don't have his name or his number and that was on a friday and that monday he contacted me and i was like you need to call me right now because it blew my mind like how would you randomly contact me it's been a few few months or whatever so when he contacted me, I found out, you know, that me and him had such a strong connection and come to find out his birthday is the day before my mom. His birthday is eight days after my boyfriend that passed away. Um, and we just had such a strong connection. Even when it was time for me to meet his mom, I had met his mom back when I was 14 years old because my friend my friend's mother and his mom worked in the same office so I've seen his mom prior to meeting him and um you know even with you know the dates and everything aligning, and I'm just like this is crazy but the story gets crazier because two months into the relationship I got pregnant and then when I was around maybe seven months pregnant or so, we went to meet the bulk of his family because he has a really large family and they're very close knit. Um, so they always do holidays and things like that. And I really value that because I've always wanted to have that. I come from a large family from both my mom and my dad's side, but the families are kind of divided and it's not like how his family was. And I remember meeting his aunt and his aunt is someone that I've seen before, but I've never seen her before. And I remember I must have dreamt about his aunt when I was like eight years old or something, because I don't know, I just feel like I've known her my whole life. And to this day, when I see her, we're like two peas in a pod. Like, I love her so much. She's a diva. I'm a diva. So long story short, I go to meet his, you know, his grandparents. We go to the grandparents house meeting them they're asking about me where i'm from things like that and we also had plans later on that day to meet up with my dad because my dad had moved to savannah georgia back in 2006. keep in mind keep in mind we're from bermuda okay so this is not ironic this whole georgia and bermuda situation like i don't know this is divine intervention okay so either way 
do y'all know when I went to meet his grandparents that my dad was living in the house right next door? So much so that they had seen my dad, had said hello to my dad in passing over the few years prior to me and my husband even meeting. So when I go and tell his grandmother, you know, I'm from Bermuda, she's like, our neighbors are Bermudian. Let me go and see. And this kind of stuff does not happen. For me to be from another country, I've met his mom. I've dreamt about his aunt, you know, like the birthdays, everything. So I truly believe to this day, no one can tell me different that this is my husband. Like this is the man that God had designed for me to marry so initially when we got together of course lust and everything was involved but with all of the signs and wonders that happened i was like this is not by coincidence or chance like this this is crazy so i go ahead so then also one more thing i want to mention before i get into it um so we met january 25th and then that was the last that was the last Friday in January that we met. We didn't date start dating until like March the 13th. But we married January 25th the following year. And I didn't realize the dates until like maybe we were 3 years into the marriage and my father-in-law actually officiated our wedding. At the time we had a lot of family drama going on so my family was not there. Um and I'm not going to get into that, but Besides the point, um, there were a lot of signs to let me know, like, this is my husband and we're meant to be together. Um, when I had my son, um, it was a very traumatic experience. I was high risk with health conditions from the pregnancy. And then my son was born with cerebral palsy due to lack of oxygen to the brain, which was medical negligence. And I do plan on doing a video on that and just speaking on experiences of, you know, the experience of my pregnancy and also being a black woman in the medical system. So as I was saying, my son was born with, you know, medical complications. So being 19 years old, my husband being a few years older than me and being newlyweds, having to live with family because we're broke, we don't have money, and we didn't have anywhere for us and our baby to go. His parents took us in and, you know, from there life started. And if you can imagine um, being in a country where your family is not there and, you know, you don't really have the support that you need, because my parents are not rich. Um, my mom has helped out any way that she can. And over the years, she's helped us out several times on numerous occasions with money groceries multiple ways she has helped just as his parents have helped as well um but in saying all of that i don't have my family close to me where i can just go to their house drop them off for relief with daycare things like that and then having a child with special needs and you're not sure of you know exactly what the need is for the child um, being stressed, being upset, um, is all an understatement. Um, so as life progressed, we struggled. Um, we had a lot of financial struggles. Um, we've went through everything from bad credit to car repossession, um, having to move frequently, having to move back in with, um, parent, with his parents, not once, not twice, but three times just trying to figure things out and then finally when we got to a point where we're like okay you know it's time for us to really get things in order i had my beautiful baby girl and we had planned to move back to atlanta and really start you know start our life and buy a house and do all of the things and COVID happened <laughs> So it's just always seemed like it's something after the other. Every time that we got to a point where we were supposed to break even, something would happen and we would get set back. We've had to deal with so many different doctors, physicians, and specialists on behalf of my son. And I'm just trying to make sure that his health is intact and we have some kind of quality care, some, some type of quality care plan in place for him so that way we know how to manage different situations with school and medically because he also has epilepsy 
where he suffers from seizures due to this brain injury. So it's a lot of things that we have had to deal with on top of myself and my husband gaining over 100 pounds. Um, mine, of course, from pregnancy and then stress and things like that. So it's been a journey. I have been through so much. Um, and I started my YouTube platform in the hopes that I could inspire other women and moms especially to find that va va boom. Don't lose yourself just because you're in a marriage or just because you're a mom or your circumstances because when you become a mother, you almost never feel the same again and your life is not your own because you have to then put someone else's life in front of yourself before you can cater to the needs that you have for yourself as a woman. So I've had to deal with that, not being able to get my hair done at the salon and doing different things like that. It's a lot of things that I have sacrificed mainly sacrifice being around my family um and that was kind of by choice however you know i do kind of wish that my family was more involved in my life current day because it will make things a little bit easier but i'm a very private person hence i'm telling y'all my problems on youtube but i am a very private person so i don't feel like you know i want a lot of people to know what i'm going through but sometimes it's good to speak up because you never know how you can be blessed from speaking up and you never know how you can share your story and it can help deliver someone else out of their own situation. So that's the main purpose. God has instructed me to tell my story. Um, so in saying all of that, um, I feel like as mothers, we don't really, we, we sacrifice more whether you're married or a single mother the mother is always going to take on the brunt of the responsibility when it comes to the children um, and that's just the bottom line in some rare cases fathers have to step up single dads things like that but for the vast majority of it it's going to be on the mom cooking cleaning laundry schools events extracurricular activities and we become what's called overstimulated and when a woman is overstimulated, she can't really think about anything for herself. She's just trying to get a little woosa, like, let me just catch my breath for a minute. Um, so yeah, that's the basis of, you know, how we met. Um, we have two beautiful children um, and just life and how life has been. We haven't even been able to, you know, do things as a couple as far as like, you know, just seeing if someone can watch our son so we can do a trip out of town alone and having that intimacy and i'm going to tell you right now intimacy is very important in a relationship and i'm not talking about sex what i'm talking about is quality time with your significant other learning things about each other outside of what you share parenting and work spending that quality time with one another it's very important also it's very important to keep God at the head of your marriage. When you marry, it's three entities. It's God, your husband, and your significant other. Because if God is not at the head of it, it allows everything else to kind of come in and interfere and distract what God has put together. Um, we fight not by flesh and blood, but through spirit, principalities, and dark powers and things like that. So everything happens in spirit first before it happens in the physical. So that's the baseline of my marriage, what I've been up to, just life. But I want to get into what happened um, and then where I am current day. So basically, my husband lost 100 pounds. His brother is an artist. I'm not calling out his brother. I'm not trying to get clout or anything like that. So he lost 100 pounds and he was going on tour with his brother. And before the tour started um, back in 2022 i just felt like things were like different you know and i just you know started doing my question like you know are you talking to someone like what's going on and you know i went through his phone like we all do and i saw some things that were just very disturbing um and you know we kind of brushed it off and just kind of he went on tour and during this time i had the children by myself for about you know two months or so well close to two months like six weeks and um yeah i was just doing my own thing being a mom and all of that 
and I didn't realize how far off him and I were in the relationship um, as far as like, you know, where we stood, it's always been like kind of things turn into obligation, like we're working to pay bills, we're parenting because we have children. Um, but it was like the intimacy and all of that started to dwindle. So shortly after he returned back, we moved to Atlanta. We got a nice apartment and, you know, life had just, you know, started and we were working towards getting, um, you know, a house at some point. And, um, you know, that still kept on coming up, like just my suspicions, things like that. But I was just like, whatever. I don't have any real concrete evidence, just like, you know, how men can be like liking other women's Instagram photos and stuff like that. So long story short, that January, which was January of 2023, I said that dangerous prayer. And I'm going to tell y'all, be careful of what you pray for because you will get an answer. I said a prayer. I said, God, please reveal to me the heart of my husband and anybody that is in my life that is not supposed to be in my life. And from that point on, the revelation came and I started to see certain behaviors and things that were not normal um, unfold. And I remember that I remember that God had actually given me a rapture dream. And in the rapture dream that he gave to me, he let me know, like, you need to forgive. Um, and I have a TikTok on it. If y'all are not following me on TikTok, you can watch that if you want to. It's very detailed about the rapture dream. But the rapture dream sig signified or it was significant to forgiveness. And like I said, everything happens in spirit before in the physical. So God was already pre-warning me, like, you know, you're going to go through a season where somebody's going to do something to you that is going to require your forgiveness. And sure enough, I had the dream. And then about maybe like a month or so later, it was revealed to me that he had an affair. And um, some of it is very painful to relive because I'm still in this season and I'm trying to come out of it. Um, but in saying all of that, he had an affair. He completely abandoned me as far as his responsibilities to our family financially. And we are currently facing eviction from where we currently live. We have never been in an eviction situation ever. And the saddest part about it is that we downsized to a two bedroom apartment um, so that way we could save money for this house that I want so bad. And excuse my arm, I'm gonna get into my skin in just a moment and explain what's been going on with my skin, um, which is also why I have not been recording content because it does require my skin to show and all of that. But um, yeah, I've been heavily under stress. My hair has been falling out. Um, I have been you know, having issues with my skin and my health. Um, due to everything that has unfolded and God has been with me through it all but I have spent many nights crying many nights confused on why this has happened and um, the truth of the matter is the truth of the matter is whether you have been married to your loved one for 50 years or whether you have been married for 5 10 15 years the moral to the story is never lose yourself in a marriage and never be so wrapped up in the marriage that you cannot do the things that you enjoy that make you happy because my marriage is coming to a halt because of infidelity and now I have to figure life out on my own and I have to also renew myself, figure out the things that I like just for Ebony, figure out the things that I enjoy doing and just figure out goals and things that I have that have now changed due to this unforeseen um, traumatic event that has happened in my life. Whereas a woman that has been married for 50 something years and her husband passes away, she has to then do the same thing that I'm doing. So the moral to the story is whether the marriage ends for infidelity, whatever, or it ends in death, at some point we as women and men come back to the beginning of self and having to start life over. So you might as well just love yourself and not lose yourself in the marriage or the relationship because at some point you come back to just yourself. And when you have to look at yourself in the mirror and figure out who am I? What am I doing? 
what does life look like in six months from now? And a lot of women um, in their youth, like when they're married or in long-term relationships, they spend a lot of their youth um, just being dedicated to family life and losing themselves in the marriage and, you know, just raising their children up. And then when they get in like their 40s and their 50s, they try to revamp themselves because they want to feel renewed. And I'm just here to tell y'all, it's nothing wrong with raising your family and sacrificing yourself for the sake of your children. But eventually your children, they become adults and they go on to live their own lives. So when you're in a marriage, it's good to be in that marriage, have the intimacy, keep God at the head of the marriage. Because when the children go away, you know, then what do you have? So some mistakes that we have made as a married couple, my son slept in the bed with us until he was six. And then my daughter also slept in the bed and she's still in the bed with me. And that is like a big no, no, you cannot do that when you're in a marriage. So due to that, I have been going through the worst season of my life. Um, I know that ultimately God will be there with me and God has a plan for me. I currently am in the process of quitting my job and I don't want to quit my job, but I have to because I need funds out of my 401k, okay? Um, just so I can sustain myself and, um, you know, get myself where I need to be. And I have a really great job that God blessed me with. I work for it. I work for a company, a very prestigious um, financial company. And um, I work in a position that I did not apply for that was given to me. And also, I'm not qualified for, I mean, I'm qualified for it, but anybody else trying to get my position they wouldn't be able to get it without being licensed so god blessed me with this job and i just believe that if he could do it before he if he did it before he will do it again the righteous is never forsaken and i just know that ultimately god has a plan as it pertains to my life i'm currently in the process of as i mentioned quitting my job i'm currently on a leave of absence just so that i can have time to get my affairs in order um, and also just be in the mental capacity where i can just focus on what's going on with this situation my living situation and just being available for my children and in addition to that i'm currently looking for somewhere to stay for me and my kids for right now um, i'm just worrying about ebony and what ebony has to do for herself and for her children um, and also just getting my health back in order. Um, I started vaping, which is horrible because I am not a drinker or a smoker, um, but that has been my vice. I'm allergic to it, so it has flared up my eczema. And this has gotten all over my entire body. It has affected my content because a lot of the videos that I do are shapewear videos. Um, they have been clothing videos and I've just been humiliated by the skin and I did it to myself. But the pain that I have been experiencing has been so much worse than what I've been dealing with with my skin. Um, just a woman in my situation, I'm gonna be completely transparent. When this stuff first happened with my skin, I did go to the doctor. I got tested for every STD. Everything has come back negative, thank you Jesus. And you need to be testing regularly, whether you're in a marriage or whether you are single, because again, you don't know what someone is out there doing and you want to make sure that you are safe because if you're like me, I'm a mom of two. I have to be here for my children um, at the end of the day. So I had to be smart about what I'm doing and I'm in the process of being done with the vape. Um, I just kind of said to myself, and I know it's probably horrible to think this way, like once I get out of this apartment, then I'll stop because then I'll be in a new environment, but it's all mental. I mean, I can stop. God has delivered me from it already. Um, I've had so many spiritual encounters. Um, I have some spiritual advisors that have been helping me throughout this process. One of them has been Pastor um, Jeremy Stone. He's on TikTok. He goes live on TikTok between Mondays and Thursdays between 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But he has really helped me with insight spiritually on 
just everything that I'm going through and he's not a psychic or a warlock or a wizard he is a pastor with prophetic insight and he shares what he you know he prophesies you know based off of scripture so use your own discernment I tell anyone to discern the spirit but he is a true man of God I have taught with an apostle anybody in the apostolic five from a apostle to a prophet to an evangelist to a pastor i have talked to throughout this entire ordeal because it has really just turned my life upside down everything that i thought that my life would be or where it would be heading has now halted so either way um what i'm focusing on right now for myself is making sure that me and my children can move into our own place um and also making sure that I can be the best mother to my children in addition to making sure that I can focus on my well-being and my welfare because again some of the things that have happened I need a minute um, just to get my life in order um, and as I was mentioning before the video stopped recording is that I have had a lot of spiritual counsel They've led me to a lot of Bible scriptures to read that are going to be really helpful to my healing process. And um, I do have a church home, but the church home that I have, it's kind of far from where I live. So I've been like a bedside Baptist where I've just been watching church um, from the comfort of my home. Sorry for any background noise or anything like that. I'm currently grabbing some lunch before I have to pick my son up from school. Mommy mode never ends. But in saying all of that, um, yeah, so I have been through so much and I just feel like I need a minute for myself. Um, I feel like, you know, my husband and I, we both need to take the time to heal and work on each other, ourselves, individually, separately. Um, and it's taking a toll on the children because obviously they know that things are different between mommy and daddy. But nothing could ever happen between my husband and I that would ever stop us from loving our children and being there for our kids. So that's what the immediate future looks like in regards to any marital restoration. Um, definitely, we need time, time to heal. Um, and I do believe that I am in what's called the prodigal marriage. I am praying for marriage restoration because I don't want to see my family torn apart. Um, however, spiritual warfare will always come when it's two people that God has joined together in marriage. Whether your story looks like mine or it doesn't, um, there's always going to be something, whether it's an infirmity whether it's financial, whether it's communication, whether it's infidelity, it's always going to be something that comes up in your marriage. No marriage, no relationship is perfect. So you have to continuously work at it, but you have to keep God at the center because God is like your navigation tool. None of us know the future. We don't know the plans for the future. We can only live in the now and we can do things and take the proper steps so that way you can secure your future. But it's kind of challenging to do that when you do everything so young because you're still a child yourself. You haven't figured yourself out. And basically my entire identity has been under the covenant of being a wife and a mom. I don't even know who I am as far as what do I enjoy doing for me. While my husband was committing affairs or having an affair, we were going out on dates. We were having sex regularly. Um, I was cooking dinner. We were showing each other affection and all of that. So sometimes the signs are there where they get distant and sometimes they are not. And, you know, there was a lot of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There was a lot of gaslighting that was done. You know, I was told that my weight has something to do with it. The fact that he lost the weight and I did not lose the weight, that that played a role in it. But the truth of the matter is, if you are a man or a woman and you cheat on your significant other, whether it is your boyfriend, girlfriend, or your husband or your wife, it has nothing to do with that person. It has everything to do with you and who you are as a person. And ultimately, you know, my husband has had it very good. I'm the type of wife that I'm very traditional. I cook, I clean, I do laundry. 
I was even clipping toenails, y'all. I'm just going to keep it real. Like, I, you know, I know the value that I bring um, as a woman to my marriage. Now, am I the perfect wife? No, I'm not. Do I have room to improve? Yes, but I didn't deserve to to go through what I've been through just like no woman does, you know, and now having to figure out, okay, well, how am I going to do this on my own? And how am I going to, you know, figure things out, but I just have to do that. And I have to trust that God has a plan for me, despite, you know, what it is that I'm going through. I'm still believing God for marriage restoration because my husband has already proven over several years that he is a great father. I would never take that from him. He's a great father. He has for many years been a great supporter, a great provider. I mean, with a lot of my content, he's the person behind the camera. He has been the number one supporter of my channel. And um, I mean, it's tough, but I have to figure out things for Ebony because I'm not going to let someone, you know, take advantage of the person that I am, regardless of who you are. Um, and I'm just trusting that God is going to make a way. Um, and if it doesn't come to that, then at least I can know that I did my part. Too many women of, you know, color we have broken families we have men that create broken homes and we're left to pick up the pieces you know and it's it's not fair it's not fair um that we have to deal with that but i say to you as a woman to another woman as a mother to another mother as a internet bestie to another internet bestie you have to do what's right for you do not let someone destroy what you have built um, because I really felt like I was going to have to end my channel. I was that low and I felt like I was in sinking sand and I couldn't, I couldn't get myself out of it. I just could not get myself out of it. You just have to, you have to do what's right for you. You have to make sure that you are good because if you're not good for you, you're going to be no more good to anyone else. And I just have to, I had to take a minute. I had to stop. I had to pause and I had to really reevaluate my life and figure out, okay, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Because if I stay and I do not leave, then it's acceptable and it's not acceptable. It's not acceptable. So I need to take a step and a minute for myself so I can heal and do what's right for Ebony. And um, I have a lot of support, but I'm the type of person that I go into my little hermit shell and I just try to figure things out. Since I was a child, I've always been self-sufficient. I've always been like a leader. I've never been really someone that's just going to sit around and try to, you know, just wait for things to happen. I've always been a go-getter. I've always been someone that's trying to make things happen for myself. And I'm going to continue to do that, but I'm not giving up on the brand that I have built. I'm not giving up on myself and I'm going to make sure that I'm the best mother and the best Ebony to myself because I've been playing with myself for too long. Some things that I have discovered for myself that I do enjoy, I know that I love to travel, so I definitely want to travel. I definitely want to really enhance my skincare because my skin is so damaged from this vape that I've been doing, y'all. Um, but everything that is bad can be used for the glory of God. So at the end of the day, I'm worshiping God throughout all of it. I feel like Job. I feel like I'm losing everything. The family that I had, um, I'm losing my job that God gave me with the perfect schedule, great pay. But ultimately, I'm gaining a deeper relationship with God and I'm finding myself. And I know that things will be okay. I know that they'll be okay. They'll be better than okay. Whenever you see in life that you are having so many things pile up on you at once, that means that you have a breakthrough coming. But what the devil will do when the devil knows that a breakthrough for you is coming, he'll try to do something to destroy you or deter you from getting that blessing. That's why you have to keep God at the center so that way you can go, you can have that breakthrough. 
so just like what i was saying earlier like every time it seemed like we we're going to have a breakthrough something will happen to mess things up that's the devil interfering the breakthrough so in order for the breakthrough to be fulfilled um you have to stay in consecration with god and i'm not talking about watching a video on tiktok i'm not talking about you know reading a bible scripture you know every now and then i'm talking about really understanding the character of god because i heard the voice of god when this first happened and the first thing that god told me is no and no meant that my my marriage would not end in divorce the second thing that god told me to do is not to condemn my husband because he has a purpose and a plan for my husband and obedience is better than sacrifice because that contradicted everything that i felt how i felt was f him i'm getting my things and i'm getting up out of here and God quickly sat me down for a minute and let me know, like, no, ma'am, you're not going to be able to just get up out of this situation. It was certain things that needed to be revealed to me and certain things that I had to grow within myself spiritually before God would deliver me out of the situation. So I say all of that to say, I don't know what any of you all are standing in the need of right now, what battles you face, what struggles you have, but... There is life after divorce. There is life after parenting. There's life after loss if you've lost a loved one. But you have to take the time you need for yourself. And don't ever get too wrapped up in the marriage or the relationship that you lose yourself. Because remember what I said at the beginning. Whether you lose this person through divorce, separation, or whether you've been married for 45 years and then they pass away. At some point, it always leads back to you. There are women that I know right now in their 70s starting their life over, trying to figure out how can I, how can I live without my spouse? That's all they've known. So we have to take time for ourselves to do things for ourselves always. So you don't lose sight of who you are. Glamorous Gems was a God-given vision given to me. And it represents the Proverbs 31 woman. Um, just a woman that knows her morals, knows her worth. She worships and serves the Lord in all that she does. And I feel like I have at some point embodied that on the channel. But I'm really going to get a little bit deeper into that because a lot of the content that i have been putting on the channel has been more so secular i've done the swimsuit hauls i've done very seduct seductive and provocative clothing and you know for me and my brand and what i'm wanting to represent and convey to my audience is somewhat more of a modest woman showing that you could still be classy and elegant with a little bit of sex appeal but you're not doing too much so the brand is going to be changing um just for content purposes or for my brand overall is going to be faith fitness and fashion so that's what glamorous gems will represent because i have to get back into my faith and just really express that on the channel because if it had not been for the lord who was on my side where would i be okay so i cannot not share my experience with the lord in the hopes that i can encourage someone else even if it's one person to just follow the path of jesus i'm telling you it's the best journey of your life it's not an easy journey and it's not the common journey but for your salvation and if you want to just live a life of peace a peace that surpasses all understanding where all chaos could be going where all chaos can be happening around you or even within you but somehow god will still give you peace and joy and let you know that your life has purpose and meaning behind it that's what i have learned this lip gloss is lip glossing but that's what i have learned throughout this like god has really sustained me because when my mama wasn't available to answer the call when my best friend wasn't available for the call when my other friends wasn't available for the call the only person constant that was there was god 
And one thing that God told me because I was really hard on myself about just, you know, the vape and, you know, my anger and my hatred that I've had and just things that I've said that have been so hurtful and cruel out of, you know, heartbreak and anger. And God told me, Your, my grace is sufficient for you. He let me know he loves me despite what I'm going through. It doesn't matter. So when I tell y'all, it has been a lot. And then living in a country where I don't have family here, like both my mom and my dad permanently live in Bermuda. So I can't just run to my parents' house for a break. My grandmother, who I initially moved out here with, she's passed away. And she was like a mother to me. Um, she was the very first person that held me when I was born. Um, we did not always have the best relationship, but that was, she was like the matriarch of the family. She really, that was my girl. And, um, it's been hard not having her here because she always had an answer. She always had a solution and i don't know it's just a special bond that i have with her you know how it is with your grandmother but it's something about that maternal grandmother that it's just it does it you know so besides the point the brand is changing um, i need to get back into my faith getting back into my fitness which includes skincare health all of the things because i need to take care of myself and then finally, fashion. Um, I will still be doing the fashion content. I have so many videos for you all. Once I get moved and once I get settled, y'all are gonna be sick of me because I have to get these, these videos out. And I've lost money from doing, I've lost money from this ordeal because some of the, some of the videos were sponsored financially but I'm still going to fulfill my commitment and get the content out. I am just currently going through a very, very, very hard and a very, very trying time in my life. And I just had to take a moment. But I have some really good videos on the way. I have new branding on the way for the channel. Everything is going to be different. Everything is going to be better and everything is going to have purpose um so yeah that's what i wanted to mention on that as far as the brand and again i do thank all of my brand sponsors and partners for your patience your cooperation um some brands have been like really really good to me and i just i can't thank you all enough because i really felt like i was not going to be able to continue my content um, so I'm grateful for that and proud of myself that I'm getting through this video without getting all emotional because as women, we give so much to a man and what they'll do is they'll take you for granted thinking that they're getting or thinking that the grass is greener on the other side and the grass is only green where you water it and I am a firm believer that you cannot be a successful person in life when you build your success off of the pain and the tears of other people. And especially in the black community, I find that a lot of black men will take and waste all of our youth as black women, our youth and our beauty, raise them up to be these great men. And then when they get to a point where they feel or a level of success, they'll go and look for what you want to say their quote-unquote dream girl and try to give her everything that you need to be compensated for they want to give her everything but the downside is that she will never amount to the woman that you were to him because of time because of the things that you have learned with each other and also God is not going to bless you with a woman better than your own wife. <laughs> He's not. So you'll give this woman, this new woman, everything that should have been given to your wife. But the downside is that the new woman will never be satisfied with it. She'll never be satisfied with it. She'll be feeling like you giving her the bare minimum. So you'll give her your all, give us the bare minimum, and she'll feel like she getting the bare minimum. So either way... All I can worry about is 
my life right now and the welfare of myself and my children because I am praying for marriage restoration, but I want to be very clear and state that there are going to be a lot of things that have to take place. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so that's in God's hands right now. I don't wish bad on anybody and I'm not condemning him for what he has done because he has his own cross to bear just as I do my own. But besides the point, I've talked about the relationship. I've talked about the future of the channel, the brand and all of that. Finally, in closing, I want to go over two more things. I want to go ahead in probably on the screen. I'll leave. No, I'm going to put it in the description box. So I want to go over two more things in closing because I need to stop this video because I can feel myself getting emotional. And it's not the fact that I'm embarrassed to cry on camera or anything like that. I am just all cried out, y'all. I am all cried out. I am. My cup is empty right now. And I'm glad it's empty because God is going to fill my cup with all the oil and everything that I need to sustain me. But I want to go over two more things and then I'm going to close the video out. The first thing is that God really saved my life, y'all, because I'm telling you, this has been so heartbreaking. Y'all don't even understand the level of what I have endured. And um, God knows, he's all knowing, he sees everything. But um, I want to go ahead and let y'all know in the description box, um, there is going to be some Bible scriptures that have sustained me during this process that have given me hope, have given me peace and scriptures that I have just meditated over, meditated on for several months that have given me just a sense of peace that just surpasses all understanding. Also, I have some songs, um, some gospel songs that have really held me over um, and just given me just all, all of what I need in the moment. I listen to them just about every day. Um, I want to share that because I don't know. It's, it's common. I'm not the first. I'm not the last. Everybody on this earth knows somebody that has been cheated on. Um, so it's nothing to be ashamed about. It happens. It's not your fault that somebody cheated on you. When someone cheats on you, they're cheating on themselves. It's an insecurity or something going on within themselves. Because I'm the type of person, I don't have to cheat. I'm just going to let you know that, hey, it's not working. And I just, I can't do it no more. I don't want to be with you anymore. But I don't want to be sneaking around and doing all that crazy stuff. Because if I'm going to have me a man... Oh, me and my man, we're we going to be out, outside, okay? So I don't need to sneak in and play all, them, play all those types of games. It's just not me. I'm not judging people for why they do it or who they do it with. That's y'all's business. But for me, I can only speak for myself. I like a clear conscience because it's a lot of things in life that I can't control anyway, but I can control myself. I can control my actions and my decisions. And I just want a clear conscience. I don't want to go out and do something knowing that I'm screwing someone else over, someone that I claim to love. So I'm going to go ahead and leave all of those linked down below. Also, you want to get a journal. So you can journal. I bought this journal about three weeks ago. It was $4.99 at Burlington. And I just found it in my storage unit today. But um, it's empty. So I'm going to start journaling in here. Um, and just, you know, holding this as my personal journal. And it just says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. I'll put the scripture on the screen for you. So, um, yeah, I'm getting everything different i want everything different i just want to start over fresh start over renewed but just know it's not your fault it doesn't matter how you look it doesn't matter how you dress it doesn't matter your background your ethnicity your heritage none of that if somebody's gonna cheat on you they're gonna do it that's within themselves it does not matter because you don't have to do that that's not your only option so it's their problem not yours when you are under narcissistic oppression, which is what I have been under, that person will make you feel like, well, if you would have did this, this wouldn't have happened or da 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 da. No, it happened because you wanted to do it, so you did it.
And sometimes a man will feel like you love him so much that you would never leave. Like you would just be there, you know? So that's that. But also do not share your money with a man. Me and my husband had a pact that we would share. You know, if it's mine, it's yours. If it's yours, it's mine. But when everything came, I couldn't leave because everything we had was tied up together. Everything. And in that moment, I was so grateful we were not homeowners because I could not imagine having to deal with that. So either way, don't share all of your money with your significant other. Have you your own personal account? Every woman needs money for herself. If it's something you want to do for yourself, shopping, traveling, anything, you should not be working just to pay bills. And when you're done paying the bills, there's nothing left in the pot for you. And then if you have something happen that's crazy, then you can't leave because all your money is tied up with this person. So some things that I've already done, I've moved my money into my own personal account and I manage my own personal account. He's managing his account and that's how it's always going to be. Even if we restore the marriage, that's how it's always going to be. Yep. <laughs> Another thing, just because the sex is good does not mean you need to go ahead and get pregnant. We have to stop getting with men based off of their potential. Meet a man where he is at. And if you feel like you can accept him for who he is in that moment, then if you're comfortable, let him go ahead and, you know, pursue you or whatever. But do not date a man based off of his potential. And then when he never reaches that potential, you get disappointed. Because that's who he's been all along. For me, for me, for example, I had no choice but to date him for potential. He was um, 21 years old when we met. I was 18. So all we, either one of us had at the time was potential. But we are in our mid-30s. So at this point, it's accountability. It's accountability at this point. So all of that stuff, we grown. So it's no excuse, Okay. So you can't say, oh, it's because we got married young, none of that. We are full grown adults. Okay, so that has nothing to do with nothing. So don't date a man for his potential. But just because you with somebody and you're in have you're in high lust with that person, you don't have to just rush and get pregnant. Protect yourself because that baby is going to be here forever. And you want to make sure you have that ring, that house your credit established, all of that before you even think about bringing a child into the world. And you know, everybody, I'm a, I'm a firm believer, right? This is why you have to have a relationship with God because there's so many people out here giving relationship advice, but there's not a one size fits all when it comes to relationships. My situation may be similar to someone else's, but it's not the same. So at the end of the day, you can take advice from people, but ultimately you're in your situation and you know how it works. So discern, discern advice. Don't let someone try to dictate to you what it is you need to do or what it is that you should do or what you should do differently because people can easily give you advice when they're not in your situation. They can easily give you advice when they're not in your situation and they can judge you for decisions and choices that you make. But ultimately, you know what you're doing for yourself is right because you're not going to screw yourself over. And sometimes the only way you can learn is through experience. So sometimes you may stumble and fall, but at the end of the day, you have to do what's right for you. So discern who you even share your business with. That's why y'all need that journal and write down how you feel. It's not good to always tell your problems to other people because you open a window for them to judge you for it, for them to, you know, give their advice. Um, and it's okay to take advice because sometimes you just want to be able to lean on someone, just say like, am I going crazy here or whatever? But 
everybody needs somebody and i'm so grateful and blessed for the village that i have however sometimes it's good to journal down and just talk to god and meditate on what god is asking you to do because no one life looks the same no one person is the same we are all different some people we may be similar to but we're still different we have different minds different ways of thinking different habits different patterns so ultimately you know in your heart what you have to do we all know what we're supposed to do and that's the discernment of the spirit <laughs> even if it's a hard decision ultimately you know you know what you have to do and sometimes we want to feel solidified in our decisioning so that way that's why we go ahead and seek others for advice and sometimes you just genuinely don't know what to do so then in that case the help is there but i say all that to say you don't have to always open up you know i was in a point of desperation and the only reason that I really opened up the way that I did was because ultimately I knew that I was going to have to leave. If there was a way that I felt like I could stay, I would have kept it to myself because there's a lot of things that I've kept to myself that even my mom don't even know about. Yeah, there's a lot of things that I've kept to myself. So either way, that's all I'm saying. Don't date someone for their potential. Don't hurry up and get pregnant like what I did because I got pregnant two months later and just pace yourself, take your time, but demand your respect, lay out your priorities, what I'm going to tolerate, what I'm not going to tolerate. And if he can't get with it, he needs to figure out another option because if you are the easy going girl, the easy like, oh, I'm down with whatever, he's going to run you around because you ain't got no standards and a lot of that time it comes with your youth because I, again i was 18 19 so you know i just went along with the with the program and it here we are so either way i do have more you know videos that i will be putting up like this just on so many things that i've learned and then another reason uh, is another thing that i want to mention about discerning who you share your information with and things like that is because there are some people that are betting for your downfall and they want to have that aha moment like i knew i knew it was gonna work and to them in their miserable minds they feel justified in that but you got to be real careful about how you enjoy someone else's misery because you don't know what's around the corner for you and I'm going to leave that right where it's at, but it's the truth. So I wanted to give you all a transparent life update. It's definitely not a video that I normally do on the channel, but considering I have been gone for so many months, I mean, I put up a video in December, but that was a like, I got to get this video up because that video from December was supposed to be up in like September. So I had to get the video out. Um mental check-in i'm okay i'm taking things day by day i'm in prayer consecration i'm in my isolation period right now um, i'm just moving that's what i'm doing like i'm putting one foot in front of the other each day trying to get myself back on track um and yeah so the brand is changing I'm going through a separation due to infidelity. Um, my children are doing well. Savannah just turned five and um, yeah, Sincere just turned 15 around Valentine's Day. So the kids are doing well. Sincere's on the honor roll. <laughs> I mean, he's in the special education class, but he's on the honor roll. I mean, I just had a meeting today with his high school teacher. So I mean, the kids are doing great. Um, Savannah will be starting kindergarten in the fall. Um, yeah, it's just life. It can be unpredictable. Um, so yeah, I think that's all I have. Y'all can leave me, com you know, comments, questions. If you want to do a follow up Q and A, anything like that. And I'm, I don't know if I'm gonna get asked if you know i need any financial support no i am not asking for any financial support i am not someone that is 
I'm not someone that likes to ask for help. Number one, I'm, I'm very self-sufficient. I try to, it almost, it's kind of a pride thing, but it almost kills me to ask for help. I have been very diligent with a plan on what I'm going to do to sustain myself and my children. And that is in flow as we speak. Um, however, if you feel led to, if your heart wants to send me a card um, or anything, I'll leave my P.O. box and my giving information in the description box as well. I'm not asking for anything. I have to say that again for the people in the back. But I do know that there are people that genuinely love and care about me. So if you feel led to there you there you can go i'd appreciate just a like a comment a share i'm good with that um but yeah don't ever lose yourself in a relationship follow the lord let that let god lead your path i don't care how cliche it may sound because the devil is after marriages right now he hates anything that god loves and that god creates and marriage is the highest declaration on earth because it's a covenant, a holy covenant between your spouse and God. So he's going to do anything to destroy that, whether it's lust, drugs, whether it is financial issues, anything he's going to do to try to destroy it. And that's why you have to pray over your spouse. Do not let the sun set on your marriage if y'all have a disagreement don't go to bed angry even if you're still frustrated and you got to work it out over a few days still do not go to bed angry with your spouse be intimate with your spouse I'm not talking about sex even if it's laying in the bed reading a book spend the time that you need don't let children get in between your marriage at all because no one is more important in the marriage besides you and the spouse because the children in most cases come after and they're going to grow up one day and have their own lives and then y'all be looking at each other crazy like well what we got going on don't do it but keep God at the head of your life and the journey will be it will be bearable. It won't be easy, but it'll be bearable because he'll give you the the pathway that you need to take. Um, I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for 4,400 subscribers. I mean, we hit 4K back in December and I'm just like, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for my community. Um, I love y'all so much. Don't forget to subscribe, all of that. And I'm coming back and when I come back, it's going to be good and we going to get it done. Okay. And I totally forgot y'all. I know I'm getting off, but I wanted to finish up with my spiritual counselors. So as I mentioned, I had met with so many different people virtually, of course. So um, Prophet Shamar Bennett, he's on TikTok and Facebook. Um, he is a true prophet of the Lord. I'll give you a story. I had clicked into his live and um, I didn't comment or anything. All I did was liked it. And my name on all my social media platforms is Glamorous Gems. And he called my name. He said Ebony. <laughs> and he prophesied it to me about things as far as, as far back from my childhood. So he's a true prophet of the Lord. And then we have Pastor um, Jeremy Stone. He's on TikTok, YouTube, and Facebook. I don't think he's on Facebook, but he's on YouTube and TikTok. He has been such a pivotal person in my life, um, you know, over these past several months. Um, and just, you know, being there for me spiritually. They have been two great vessels of God. Um, that have led me closer to the Lord and have spoken to me and encouraged me. And I just hope that you all will check them out if you feel like your life is in despair or you feel as though, you know, you don't know how you're going to make it. Um, but yeah, I'll leave everything in the description box from scriptures to songs to the prophet's information as well as my giving information if you desire to give. But other than that, I love y'all so much. I am coming back very soon. It'll be before the summer. Um, and when I come back, we're going to be boom, 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 boom. Because I got so much content for y'all. So much. And y'all are going to love it. But either way, I love y'all so much. And until next time, I will see you gems and gents in the next video.
却没